Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one we have another collaboration beer. So we're going to return it to Dunis Bravery who are based in Landvetter just outside of Gothenburg, a very very big beer city these days here in Sweden. And this is another collaboration beer that they've done with Stillwater Artisanal, a gypsy brewery based over in Maryland in America. So this one should be quite cool. This one is Mango 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 and it is 4.5% sour fruit beer this one. So I'm not sure if this one's related to the, uh, the Tropic Thunder. It says on the side here Tropic Trio and I can't remember if that was part of the, the same thing that Tropic Thunder came from. That of course was a collaboration between these two same breweries and I think that might have been the first one I ever tried from Deuce but the beer should be really interesting. It was rated I think 3.9 on Untapped and I think it was a 92 that it had overall on a uh, rate beer but we know these are both two very strong breweries so it should be a pretty nice beer. We can probably safely say that but um, yeah I'm looking forward to trying this one and I hope you guys enjoy my take on it. So yeah, so anyway as is usual with my beer reviews then I'll tell you a little bit about both the breweries involved here. If you want to get straight to the tasting of course just just fast forward, all the usual links are in the description below, that's the brewery website, it's the link to my other reviews that I've done both from Douglas Bravery and from Stillwater Artisanal, there's all the usual social media, if you want to see more beer reviews do consider subscribing to the channel, the whole channel of course has a geography based tagging system so you can go into the home page and search for beer based on country, city or state, whatever it is you're interested in, do check out the playlist of beers from different countries, there is one there for both the Swedish beers that I've done for you and for the American ones, those are constantly being added to and as always please Please get in touch and let me know some of the other beers and breweries that you guys would like to see me review. It's always great to hear from you guys and the support that you give the channel is hugely appreciated. So anyway, to tell you a little bit about Dugas Bravery first off then. So as I mentioned to you, Dugas Bravery are based in Landvetter on the outside, on the outskirts of Gothenburg, Jutebor as you would say in Swedish, on the kind of west coast of Sweden. So the brewery was established back in 2005 in Mundal by Mikael Engström Duga and since 2010 they focus mainly on, uh, on brewing top fermented beers, they do a lot of sour ales, a lot of IPAs and things like this but more recently I think they have been doing imperial stouts and uh, various other things. They're quite a prolific brewery actually, there's always new things coming out from Dugas Brewery and of course as a beer reviewer that is what you want actually but due to the kind of renaissance and the boom that's going on in Swedish craft beer, Dugas found themselves having to move really rather quickly so they moved out of the original brewery and moved to Landvetter. So the older brewery had a capacity of only 1500 hectolitres of beer per year and when they moved into their new facility at Landvetter it had uh, a capacity of 8000 hectolitres per year but they've been expanding that over the last few years as well and uh, I think they do have an involvement, involvement at the Brewers Bar in Gothenburg as well so that's a good place to go if you want to try some of the different beers. I think like uh, Beer Bluetech and a few and Beer Dude Rabbit and things, I think a few other people do have a share in that, in that bar as well but as I said to you at the start of the video Gothenburg is a really really good beer city these days and it's constantly growing so if you want to come to Sweden and you want some really good beer I guess Gothenburg is the place that you want to hit up although Stockholm and Skåne generally are getting quite good as well so Sweden is having a, a bit of a craft beer boom at the moment so keep an eye on what's going on here and uh, that you will find some really really good beers actually Sweden is constantly improving when it comes to beer and they're at a very high standard already so exciting times ahead but anyway on to still Stillwater Artisanal then. So Stillwater Artisanal is the venture of gypsy brewer Brian Stillwater Strumku who's a native of Baltimore over in Maryland in America and he's a former world renowned techno DJ and producer but he made himself known in home brewing circles over in America because he was using a lot of kind of unusual techniques and he was using a lot of random things in his beers. That's probably what Stillwater are best known for. They like to use herbs, spices, kind of wild yeasts and a whole host of other things. You get some really really random beers out of Stillwater Artisanal but he was actually rated as one of the best newcomer brewers in the world just after they started up and he's remained high in the top 100 brewers in the world as well ever since then on rate beer but he now travels the world and does a lot of collaboration beers with various different people of course. They does tend to frequent Dugas quite regularly I think. They must be a deal with Dugas to, uh, to brew different beers there. I know Dugas have a deal with Omnipoyo as well from, uh, from Stockholm but uh, Dugas seems to be a bit of a hub for uh, collaboration beers and stuff like this which is really cool because that means that you get some really random things and it means that the brewers at Dugas Brewery of course are becoming very very skilled too but still water go around different places they've brewed with my local brewery back in Scotland Williams Brothers and uh, they brew their beers at a whole host of different places. So yeah, Stillwater Artisanal is a brewery that you also want to check out if you want something a little bit more quirky and unusual. I don't think these guys have got a core range of beers. I think 
we tend to brew really random things and do a lot of collaborational things. But yeah, two really good breweries involved in this one, so we'll get on to the tasting of this beer itself now. So yeah, on the side here it says, it might sound like an echo, but it's not. This collaboration with Stillwater Artisanal explores the true depth of the mango flavour. Three layers of taste and aroma from fruit and hops. Go mango. So yeah, it tells you a little bit on the side here about the ingredients. And I'll just let you have a little quick look at the artwork on this one again. So it's the typical style Dugas bottle on this one. Plain bottle cap, of course, but there you can see Dugas symbol at the top here. And as I say, I can't remember if um, <clears throat> I can't remember if the Tropic Thunder, which was the first beer I tried involving both of these breweries, is part of the Tropic Trio as well. It might be a slightly different series, but yeah, this one should be a really nice mango flavoured sour beer. So without further ado, then I guess let's get this guy out and we'll get on with the tasting. It says best before the 15th of, of March 2019, so I guess it was probably bottled on the 15th of March this year, because usually sour beers I think last two years or so. But yeah, as you can see, a nice smoky opening on this one, and we'll get it out and into the glass. And this is one actually I should point out, my friend Andreas from uh, Ulrezan, he pointed out to me that this is a really uh, quite nice beer. So yeah, this is one that he told me, make sure you get this when it comes out. And incidentally, this one came out through the small partiers on the uh, the 19th of May 2017 here in Sweden. But I think it's been out in Denmark and other places like that for a little while longer. But yeah, look at this. You know, it's poured a really kind of, almost like a matte yellow colour. You could mistake this for being like pineapple juice or tropical fruit juice or something like this. It's a really, really quite pretty looking beer. And immediately you can smell the mangoes off this, of course. The mango normally is the telltale sign of the citra hop. So I do wonder if they'll use, I've used a little bit of that in here. But obviously they've added mango to the brew as well. So yeah, you can see a really nice kind of bright um, yellowy colour. This one, almost the same actually as on the label. But it looks very, very nice. There's a, about a half or a quarter finger of a kind of bubbly white head on this one. Some big bubbles sticking towards the side of the glass and a few little ones just going up towards the bottom of that head there. But overall, it looks uh, it looks really quite nice and the aroma of this one is just lovely. Those big juicy mangoes are kind of jumping out at you there. But yeah, a really nice one. Really nice looking beer. So we'll take a closer look at the aroma then. So yeah. Oh, yeah. It smells actually really quite different when you go up close to it. It really reminds me, I don't know if this is a good descriptor for those of you who will be watching in Sweden, because I don't know how common it is, but it really reminds me of like ice poles and these, it's almost if you take like some of these really sugary drinks that you get as a kid and freeze them and make them into ice and make them just into these kind of ice pole things that you squeeze and suck on. Um, it, it really reminds me of that, it smells just like a mango kind of fruity flavoured icy thing actually. We would call them sun lollies back in Scotland. There's always sun lollies that we had and ice poles and stuff. I'm not, as I say, I'm not sure if that's a good descriptor for some of you guys watching in Sweden. Of course, the, the desserts and stuff, you do get ice cream and things, but the desserts over here are quite different. It's almost just if you take like an ice lolly or a popsicle, I guess, is maybe a better thing with, for to describe it for Swedes. But it's almost as if you just have like a mango popsicle. That's probably a good way to describe the aroma of this beer. You can smell some of there is a bit more kind of tropical complexity to it. You can smell almost like a little bit of a kind of, uh, not quite, I don't know if it's quite peachy. There's a little bit of a, a kind of papaya kind of thing to this one as well. There's a little bit of a kind of apricot -y papaya kind of thing just underpinning that. So there is a little bit more complexity to the fruits in this than just being straight up mango. But you can get a little bit of floral and kind of grassy character out of the beer. And there's, it's mainly just the kind of bready malt base that's coming out of this. You can detect just a little bit of that kind of sharp, tart, lemony, citric kind of thing that you're going to expect from the, the bacteria, the Britannomyces or whatever, that they've used in this beer. But yeah, definitely a sort of white bready thing in there too. So as I always say, just take a little bit of time to mull over the aroma of the beer before you get stuck in. But we'll try this one now. So this one is the Mango Mango Mango. A collaboration between Dugas Brewery from Landvetter near Gothenburg in Sweden and Stillwater Artisanal, a gypsy brewery based in Maryland over in Bal or Baltimore in Maryland over in America. Slanja Ska. Yeah. That's pretty damn good. It kinda I, I think really as I've mentioned to you in a few of the sour beer videos that I've done before, there's a lot of, um, there's, either I'm getting more used to, uh, to the kind of Swedish beers, 
or the sour beers I should say, not the Swedish beers. I'm getting more used to the sour beer styles, wild ales and stuff like this. And the, the, they seem to just be improving. Either the breweries are getting better at brewing these, or I'm just getting more used to the style. It's probably a combination of both, to be quite honest with you. But the, sour, the quality of sour beers that are coming out these days are really, really good, and this is certainly no exception to that. So if you get the chance to try this beer, I can tell you on one sip, you do want to have a go at this, because it is really quirky. Yeah. That's a good beer. I can see right away why Andreas wanted me to try this one. So, the malt base is quite simple. It's exactly what you'd expect. It's a light, kind of, you can feel a little bit of pale malt character in there, but it's got a light, it's got a kind of thicker um, breadiness to it. It might be some kind of wheaty smoothness. It might even be a little bit oaty. The sort of sweetness to the bready character in this is reminding me a little bit of the, the kind of New England IPAs, if you like. So, it's quite an interesting malt base that's on this one. So, just pay attention to that. But that's a nice beer. The sharpness, you're getting some of that typical lemony tart sharpness that you would expect from the, the bacteria. I don't know if it's Britannomyces they've used in this one. I'll just check again. Uh, it's Lactobacillus that they've used in this one, not Britannomyces. So you're getting a little bit of that sharper tart lemony character. And it comes out more towards the front of the tongue in this one. And it starts off and it comes in really sharp. But then it just fades out a little bit more. And then just underneath that, you get these lovely mango flavours. Around the edges of the tongue where the hops would normally come out, come out there's a little bit of a kind of um, sort of floral, kind of grassy sort of thing that's coming out there. And uh, the hops in this, they do come out a bit more juicy rather than being bitter. So you can get a little bit of that mango. If you go just behind the front curve of the tongue, that's where you'll get the little oily bubble where all these fruity esters come out. I really do wonder if they've used citra in this one because you're getting that mango in there. But then as you progress further and further into the flavour, there's a little bit of these almost lychee or kind of gooseberry flavours coming out. Just pay attention to that behind the front curve of your tongue as the flavour progresses. There's definitely... As always say, the way to tell the difference between when they add fruits to the beer and when the, the fruity flavours you're getting from the hop oils, if they're from the hop oils, they'll always come out behind the front curve of the tongue, but if there's an addition to the brew, you'll always get this fruity, juicy character around the edge of your tongue. So on the, in the hoppy side of things, you can feel this sort of floral, kind of grassy sort of thing just mixing with these juicy mango flavours, and that combination is really quite interesting. And like I said as well, the malt base on this one to me is a little bit reminiscent of some of these kind of East Coast New England style IPAs. It has that sort of oaty character to it as well, which is interesting. But that's a really nice beer. As I say, it comes in a little bit sharper, then it just mellows out really nicely. And as you get further and further into the aftertaste, it's more of that oaty character that comes out, the juicy mangoes, and a little bit more of that slightly tropical fruit complexity that the beer has. You can detect that light grassy note from the hop around the front curve of your tongue and just a little bit of the floral character on the edge of the tongue. But really, the flavour is dominated by the mango, as you'd expect by the name. Uh, but there's also a little bit of that tropical fruit complexity in there. Some of that tart lemon character just lingering as well. And that nice kind of bready malt base, the kind of oaty bready sort of thing going on. But overall, this is a really nice beer and I can see why it's highly rated. I certainly wouldn't hesitate to drink this one again. So I have to thank Andreas for the recommendation. So if you get the chance to try this one, I highly recommend that you do. And I will need to try the other ones that have this kind of tropical trio mark. I need to see if I can get a hold of those and review them for you. But yeah, a really, really solid beer. You wouldn't expect anything less from either of the two breweries involved here. In terms of the mouthfeel of this one, uh, I would say it's mid-bodied. It's, it's a little bit heavier than, than it's, in some ways it's a little bit heavier than some of the sour beers I've come across and it's a little bit lighter than some others. So I think mid-bodied is a good way to describe this one. The carbonation is quite, uh, it's quite smooth on this one. It's not got too much of an attack to it. The mouthfeel is a good mixture between it. It's got a little bit of creaminess to it because of that malt base, but at the same time there's a little bit of crispness there. I always find that the you get a little bit of crispness from these sour beers actually, so that's quite interesting too. There's a little bit of hoppy bitterness, but very, very minimal. It's more a smooth hoppy character coming out of this one. There's a good bit of tart sharpness from the lactobacillus in the beer. There's a good bit of fruity juiciness as well, but there's a nice kind of sweet smoothness coming out of the malt base too. Just this, this whole beer 
it's not too kind of punchy in any one regard of its flavour, it's more about how everything goes together for me, although the mangoes of course do jump out and some of the the, the, the way that the, the sour character in this one comes out for me is a little bit different but overall it's about how the flavours blend together and it does a really really great job so I would recommend that you try this one if you get the chance because it is very quirky but at the same time it's really good as well so yeah that's that hopefully sums up this beer quite well but I hope you've enjoyed my beer reviews once again thank you for watching until the next time please like subscribe share all the usual YouTube stuff check out my social media all the links are in the description below of course let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comments section below if you have tried the beer and let me know what your favourite beers are from both breweries and do let me know what the other beers are in this kind of Tropic Trio series, I need to look that up and let me know what your thoughts on them are as well but I'll catch you very soon with more beer reviews, this was the Mango Mango Mango, a really lovely sour beer from Dugas Bragery in Landvetter near Gothenburg in Sweden and Stillwater Artisanal from Baltimore, Maryland. Slanted just now and I will catch you guys very soon. Skull.